uh, before I became vocation director, and I was uh, there working on campus, uh, home of the number one university in the country. And um, <laughs> one of the things I used to do is take the kids to Steubenville West up in Spokane. We used to go up there and uh, uh, really be able to pray and help them and help all of us to grow spiritually and deepen our relationship with the Lord. And um, I was there, and uh, I went with Father Mark Bachmeyer, a good friend of mine who's pastor now at Holy Cross, but he was at Eugene at the time. So we all went together, and Father Mark and I were there with all kinds of other priests, and they called us up. They said, all the priests, come please to introduce yourselves on stage. So Father Mark and I walked up on stage. I was walking, all of us in a row. And as I was walking on stage, all of the teenagers in front, they started yelling out, Father John! Father John! Father John! And I got excited, and I started waving back. And I said, I turned to Father Mark, and I said, how do all these kids know me? And I'm waving and waving. Well, lo and behold, Father Annenberry was right behind me. something more. What is it? 
And so if our lives are rooted in these things, we're in trouble. And my brothers and sisters, when I die in, in 2094, when I die then, it's over. If that's where my life is, it's over. There's nothing more. It's finished. But only darkness. There's nowhere else to go. It's over. And I know that there has to be something more. You know, in our gospel passage, our Lord tells us, which is very comforting, do not fear, my brothers and sisters. Do not fear. I want to give you the kingdom. The kingdom that will last forever. You know, there's this story I came across I'd like to share with you. It's about a five-year-old girl. Her name is Jenny. And Jenny was saving her money. And uh, finally she had enough. And she said, Daddy, can you take me to the department store? And they went to the department store and she found this pearl necklace. It was two dollars. And it was a beautiful little necklace. She loved it. And she bought it and she put it on. And it made her feel good. It made her feel important. And that lovely little girl wore that necklace all the time. She wore it to kindergarten. She wore it to bed. She wore it at meals. She wore it everywhere. And every night before she would go to bed, her dad would stop everything he's doing. And he would come upstairs to Jenny and he would share a bedtime story. And one day after his bedtime story with Jenny, he said, Jenny, do you love me? Do you love your dad? And Jenny said, well, Dad, you know that I love you. I love you a lot. And so his dad said, her dad said, well, <coughs> give me the pearls. I want the pearls. And Jenny said, oh, Daddy, no, not my pearls. Why don't you take Princess, the white horse from my collection? Remember, Daddy, you gave it to me. It's very special. You take it. He said, no, that's okay. And so he gave her a little kiss on the cheek and said, Daddy loves you. The following week, Daddy went upstairs again and to read little Jenny her bedtime story. And afterwards, once again, he said, Jenny, do you love me? And Jenny said, Daddy, you know that I love you. You're the best. You're my hero. Daddy said, give me your pearls. I want them. Oh, Daddy, no. Why don't you take my baby doll? I love my baby doll. I got it for my birthday. And you can have the matching yellow blanket with it. It'll be very much fun. You'll have a good time with it, Daddy. Take that. Daddy said, no, thanks. But Daddy loves you. And Daddy once again gave her a little kiss on the cheek. Well, a little while later, he walked up to see his daughter, Jenny. And Jenny was on the bed, kind of in an Indian shape, uh, or like in an Indian shape. And she was crying. She was trembling. And her daddy said, what's wrong, Jenny? What's wrong? Jenny reached up with her hand and said, here, daddy. Here's my pearls. I love you. Here, here's my pearls. And dad started to have a tear in his eye. And he took the pearls from her and said, thank you. And he put those cheap $2 pearls in his pocket. And in the other pocket, he took out this case. It was a beautiful velvet case. And he opened it up. And it was real pearls. He said, Jenny, these are for you. And gave her the real pearls. And she was so excited and filled with so much joy. Her dad carried those real pearls with him all the time. And kept waiting for her, his little daughter, to give up those cheap pearls. So she could have the real ones. I share that story with you because our God is the same way, our God, Abba. And our God says to each and every one of us, you, my son, you, my daughter, I love you so much. I want you to love me. Oh, yes, God, I love you so much. You're my all, you're everything. God says, give me everything you have. Oh, well, not right now. God, I'll give you an hour every Sunday. That's good enough. And, and I know you'll love that. And, and we'll pray and we'll sing songs. And I, I just know you'll love it. And God says, that's okay. And God gives us a little cheek, just on the cheek, and says, great. And God continues to ask us in God's love, do you love me? And God says, give me everything. And at some point in our lives, we realize that we cannot 
survive without our God. And at some point, trembling like that little girl, we say, Dear God, take it all. I want to let go. I want something good to happen. I want you to come in my life, to be the center of my life. It's all about you, Lord. I want you. I want you, Lord. And the Lord God says, Thank you. I take it all. And God says, Now I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you eternal life. I'm going to give you the kingdom. I'm going to give you what it really means to be filled with peace and joy and happiness. I'm giving it all to you. And when we open our hearts to God's love, no matter what we are experiencing, and we allow God to be the center of our lives, and we just let it all go, all of that stuff, when we let it go, I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, you will be filled with a peace that you cannot share, you cannot explain. It will be so immense, so intense, and you will know that you truly are a son and daughter of God. That is what the Lord is challenging us today, to really look at where we're at. How is our week? God wants not just one hour. God wants every moment of our lives. Everything that we do should be dedicated in relationship with God, who is love. So my brothers and sisters, when I die then, in June of 2094, I come to realize that my life now is not over. It's not ended. But it is a life now filled with God's love in eternity forever. My life continues in glory with the Lord. The Lord whom I'm excited to be with. The Lord who wants so much to have you and me with Him. And so this week, my brothers and sisters, let us all challenge ourselves and see how actually we are living. How are we truly, truly letting go and allowing God to be the center of our lives? You know, one last little story I'll share with you. I didn't share this at the other services, but it, it dawned on me. You know, my, my mother, um, God rest her soul, you know, she was at Sunday Mass uh, in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, I'm originally from Detroit, and... They were living there, and one Sunday at Mass, he was with my dad in prayer. And it was during that Mass, as, as uh, they were sharing the word, that my mother had a massive stroke. Right in the midst of there. No, no warning. Boom! It happened. And she fell in the EMT, the TMS, and then a few months later, she died. And in the course of that time, she shared with me, you know, and, and she said, you know, I, I just want to uh, let you all know that I love you, and that uh, I just always, uh, I'm so happy that I can have God as the center of my life. With some very inspiring words in those last days. And she knew that she was going to be with the Lord forever. And so I learned from her as well. That you and I must always be prepared for an hour that we do not expect. The Son of Man, the Son of God, will say, now is the time. Are we ready? Or are we buried in so many things? that we cannot see clearly. My brothers and sisters, let us pray for one another. Let us turn our lives totally and completely over to God, who is love. So live without fear, but live your lives dedicated to Him.